Hola, buenos días, ¿qué tal? Good morning, good day, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us again. We're on lesson four. We've made it to, you've made it, if you're still with us, you've made it to lesson four, so congratulations. Well done for sticking with it. Um, over 200 people have watched lesson three, which tells me that there are a few of you. We had a drop off from lesson two to lesson three, but that's going to be normal. This one today, lesson four, is um, a very simple one, really, uh, but it is most probably the most important one that you're going to get. I'm going to teach you today four words. That's it, just four words. No more, no less. But what I'm going to do with it, and the reason why it might take a little bit longer, is because I'm going to explain them in detail why this is most probably the most important lesson that you will have when it comes to learning any language, because it certainly helped me when I was in Holland. When I got over to Holland 30 years ago, I was on the east side of Holland, and even though the people could speak English on the east side, they didn't want to. So the people there were, they, they, they were country people, they weren't city people like Amsterdam or like Rotterdam. And they said, listen son, you're in our country now, therefore you speak our language. That was it, that simple. So the first word I needed to know was, right, okay, so what word do I need to know? You know, how do I get my message across? Communication is the most important word of all, uh, you know, important thing of all. So the first word that I wanted to learn was, I want because I wanted something. I want this, I want that, I want the other, and it was, I want. Now, Spanish, when I came over here, I did exactly the same, I took the same uh, principle. My grandmother used to say, I want never gets. Well, in Spain, I want definitely gets, because that is actually how they speak over here. When they want something, if they want to ask for something, most of the time they will turn around and say, I want. So your first word that we're gonna to use to learn out of the four that we mentioned, was I want. And it's very simple. You pronounce it as so. Quiero. Now straight away people can go, I don't think I'm going to get that. Quiero. As you can see, it's spelled differently, but you pronounce it. Quiero. I want. Quiero. How on earth are you going to remember that? Very, very simple. You think of two English words to remind it, and this is where we help with the links going through. The first one is to open a door and unlock a door, you're going to use a key. That's what you use. To unlock a door, you use a key. My favourite chocolate bar with bubbles in it was an arrow. I used to love the arrows when I was back in the UK. Put those two words together, quiero, simple. That's it. I want, quiero. So how important is that word? Well, let's use it in a couple of different instances, okay? We will go under Google and we will learn off Google uh, Translate different words for things that we need. So if stick with this one, quiero una cerveza. Of course, I want a beer. Quiero un café. I want a coffee. Quiero un botella de vino blanco. I want a bottle of white wine. Quiero un boli. I want a pen. Quiero mi gafas. I want my glasses. The little words afterwards, they're easy enough to get, but actually without the quiero, what happens is you'd walk into a bar and the barman would speak to you in fluent Spanish and you'd just turn around and go, cafe. We're actually, we're actually, when you think about it, what you can do now is you could walk into a bar and how about this? Hola, ¿qué tal? Bien? Gracias. We know gracias. Quiero un café, por favor. Now again, we've thrown in por favor, but por favor is a, normally a word that most people our age will know means please. So all I've done is, hi, how are you doing? Okay, can I have a coffee please? Just because I've used the word quiero, I've now linked sentences together. And if you think about the three words that we did, uh, the three blocks and then move them through, hola, buenos dias, move it along. Quiero un café, move it along, por favor, move it along. Quiero, very, very important word to use. And I've used it, I still use it, I, I still cling to it this day. Let's see how important it is. Quiero un hospital. Quiero un ambulance. Quiero un guardia civil. Now you see there, that's how important quiero can be for you. And that's why I always start off with the first word being quiero. So that's I want. After I want, you can change it to you want. Now you want is just a little bit different, okay? And we're talking about the, we'll talk about the reason why it's different in the next lesson, but you want is actually quieres. 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 That means you want. Quieres un café? You want a coffee. Now that's me literally telling you that you want a coffee. Quieres un cerveza? You want a beer. However, 
if we concentrate with this infliction in the voice, infliction, inflection, I can't remember what, how it is, but if we put that in, we get an extra word for free. We get the word do for free. So quieres, which means you want, will change to do you want. So for instance, have a listen. Quieres un café? Now you can hear it in the tone of the voice. That actually stipulates then, do you want a coffee? Now, let's take that scenario, just keep it very simple. Let's take that scenario of the quieres, but with the infliction in the voice, which was the second one that I wanted to learn, the second word of the day. When you walk into that bar now, we know another Spanish word is, uh, the word for what is que, because Manuel from Faulty Towers used to use it all the time. Que means what? Que? It was what? So if I go, que quieres? with the tone of my voice, it becomes, what do you want? So, I walk into the bar with Shelley, and we sit down, and I go to the bar, and I speak to the barman, hola, buenos dias, que tal? Um, quiero un cerveza, por favor. Shelley, que quieres? And you see now, I've asked her what she wants. Un cerveza, también. También means also. A beer also. No? Un ginebra y tonica. Okay. Hola. Um, quiero un cerveza para mí, for me, y para mi amiga, my girlfriend, mi novia, is my girlfriend, but para mí, para Shelley, uh, una ginebra y tónica, por favor. So the two words there, quiero and quieres, putting that all together it actually creates a long sentence because we've just got smart words. And that's your second word that I wanted you to learn today. So the first one, quiero, and the second one, quieres. But usually with the infliction, you get do you want for free. Quieres. Word number three. Word number three is great. Word number three is I have. So word number three becomes tengo. Now if you think tengo, but if you think of the old adverts from you've been tangoed and put an E on it instead, tengo. And that means I have. So if I've got I have, then I need you have. Or even, do you have? Now you see how it's going now, because I could walk into a shop and go, do you have? So what we do is the word for you have is tienes. Tengo, tienes. I have, you have. I throw the infliction in the voice, tienes. That means, do you have? So how handy will that be? If I look up the word, I need some milk, and I go to the shop, and I go, I can walk in there and go, tienes leche? Now what I would do is I'd look up for the word here as well. So the word for here is aquí. And I'd go, tienes leche aquí? Now, all of a sudden, I've created a question. So not only I'm asking what I want, I'm also creating questions to stipulate responses. Quiero, quieres, tengo, tienes. Out of the four, the two most important ones are quiero and tienes, because that creates I want or do you have. I could walk into anywhere and I could literally go, um, Tienes un café para mí, por favor. Do you have a coffee for me, please? Tienes leche aquí. Do you have milk here? You can see the importance of tienes in line with the importance of how important quiero is. Now, the idea of language always is to stretch it. So you might know your words, and you might know um, you might know numbers, and you might go to the petrol station, and they ask how much you want in. You go, 30 euro, por favor. Now you can actually say, quiero 30 euro, por favor. I want 30 euros, please. It's, a very, it's starting to proper communicate. Why are you learning Spanish? You're learning Spanish for one simple reason. It's, it's, it is to communicate, but the reason why you're learning Spanish is because you want your personality that you have when you speak English to be put into the same personality when you speak Spanish. So people see you, because you know that you're a nice person, so people then realize that you're also a nice person in Spanish. Because they know you're a nice person, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to actually put that position of yourself into the Spanish way as well. So, what we've talked about today, very simple one, four words, very simple, okay? Quiero, quieres, tengo, tienes. Those four words become six words when you put an inflection in the voice. Quiero, quieres, tengo, tienes. And that's where we're going to leave it today. Once again, if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to leave your comments below. It's always nice to read them and see how it works. But uh, enjoy it. And if you're still with us, stick with it. The next lesson, we're going to talk about why it's changed, why the endings are changed. But again, we'll try and understand the reason why it's done. Okay? Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Adios.